Uh, men, I just want to extend again uh, my appreciation and thanks. We had a brotherhood breakfast along with the cleanup around the church and around the parsonage. Uh, we had, uh, I think, was it 15? 15 men that showed up. Uh, 16, I'm sorry, 16 men that showed up. And believe it or not, everybody that showed up uh, that ate breakfast, didn't eat breakfast and go home. They all stayed and worked. So, uh, but uh, it didn't take us very long in doing all the cleaning, uh, hedge trimming around uh, the church, and uh, just to uh, tighten up some things around here. And, and men, we definitely appreciate it. It makes our outside look beautiful. If you didn't notice it when you come in, Look when you go out. Look at the hedges and the trims and the rounds, and uh, they done an outstanding job. And I say they, they wouldn't let me do a whole lot uh, and with my shoulder. Uh, they didn't want Miss Anna all over them. It wasn't that they didn't mind me getting hurt. They just didn't want Miss Anna jumping on them for me being hurt. But, uh, but me and we do appreciate that so much. Hey, look, Easter is coming. You see it in your bulletin. Uh, next Sunday, uh, weather permitting, we're going to have a sunrise service at 8 o'clock. It will be out in the volleyball area out there. Bring lawn chairs. So if you've got a comfortable chair you like to sit in, uh, bring those. We'll be out there. We'll have some of our chairs from the fellowship hall out there. But uh, if you feel more comfortable in your own, bring your own out there. We're going to have a good time. Uh, there will be some... Uh, uh, pastries and and I think I've heard some men say something about sausage and biscuits and that kind of stuff. Uh, drinks that will be served. Uh, it will be in the uh, fellowship hall in the back. We're gonna bring it inside so we don't eat pollen with all that stuff, you know. Uh, but we can fix it inside and we'll have a place outside. Uh, afterwards, we'll have the children in here in the sanctuary. Miss Heather Bolden is going to do the Easter egg uh, Easter story with the Easter eggs. Uh, and look, I'll even encourage you as an adult, if you've never heard that, come in and sit down and listen to it. It is a fascinating story uh, and the way that she does it and presents it. And so uh, during that time, we'll be hiding Easter eggs all over. And uh, then afterwards, uh, she gets through with the story, we'll have the Easter egg hunt. Uh, so... Uh, Keep that in mind. Also, uh, today is sort of the last day uh, that, uh, oh, excuse me, Wednesday will be the last day that we'll be taking up donations for the uh, Righteous Oaks uh, Recovery Center. Uh, that's the, the shampoo, body wash, shaving cream, those kind of things. Uh, we've already got some in the fellowship hall. If you want to bring some more and put it in there, I'll gather it up uh, Wednesday night. Uh, what we have, and I'll carry it to the LBA, and we'll be sure that it gets out to the Righteous Oaks uh, place. Uh, Bill, you had something, didn't you? All uh, right. Good morning. Do you know what next Sunday is besides Easter? He's risen. Four years ago next Sunday, you and Miss Anna come to be at Causeway Baptist Church. It's been that long. And we just got a little token of our appreciation, and we want to let you know how much we think of you, you and Miss Anna, for the jobs that y'all do and what you mean to the church. And, and we don't have to wait to Pastor Appreciation Month to show appreciation for the pastor and his wife. Let's just do that this coming week. Let's all just try to give him a call or a text or a card or something, and let me, him, and Miss Anna know what they mean, because Miss Anna works hard, just like Brother Eve does, and he hadn't had a lot, I'll be honest with you, he hadn't had an easy year. It's been tough. So let's just show him some appreciation for what he, and what him and Miss Anna does for the church. And we just like to give you this token of appreciation. Miss Anna, maybe this will get you out of the kitchen for a while, so. <laughs> well, it will definitely go to her, so uh, okay. it's for both of us. I, no, I did not realize that it had been uh, four years uh, since we had come. Uh, time has passed by quickly. Uh, yes, this past year has been uh, challenging uh, at best. Uh, as I've told somebody the other day, the new horror movie that they're coming out with is Pastoring a Church in 2020. Uh, some of y'all will get that. It, it, it has been a tough year, but God has blessed so much. I have just, it's really been a privilege uh, to pastor this church and to pastor you, uh, to get to know you and to become friends with you, uh, each one of you. I, I continue to say that I praise my deacons. 
uh, for stepping up when they needed to, especially this past year and helping out. But I will also tell you, standing in front of you, there is absolutely no way that I could have done any of this if it wasn't for the support of my wife. Uh, her supporting me, uh, us having plans and something happened and her understanding of you need to go take care of that, you need to go and take care of this family, uh, and, and her support of helping me. Uh, I, as I told you, a lot of times I, she gives me thumbs up. This morning I had on uh, 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 different clothes and I came out of the, the bedroom and she looked at him and said, you're not wearing that gray shirt with the brown pants, are you? And I'm like, nope, I just put them on as I come out the bedroom. I'm going right back in. So, you know, but all of those small things and, and the support that, that, that she gives me, uh, I really do appreciate it, and like I said, I couldn't do it without her. Uh, but uh, it has been uh, a fun, fun time. I've had a lot of fun pastoring here, and I hope the Lord has still got many more years for me. Uh, we're waiting to see what, what He has uh, for us. Uh, I do have one other announcement. Uh, Doug, we know that this is your last Sunday. You never made it a surprise when, when you came that you wanted to pastor. That was your, your desire. That's what God uh, had called you into. And you took the youth position here, and uh, you've been here almost three years. Uh, or is it a little old? Has it been three years? Uh, and, and, and you have built our youth group this past year like me. It, it's been challenging at best. Uh, but our youth group had grown at one time. We were having, what, about 18 over there, 18 youth, and, and you have done a fantastic job. And I know you put a lot of uh, God's Word in their heart. Uh, as you get ready to go, uh, I wanted to give you this uh, NASB study Bible. It's been in my office, and you've been in there a couple of times, and I have almost broke the pages of it and, and looking and studying. But you know there's a lot of good study material in here, and it'll help you in your pastoring as you look uh, forward, as we look forward to that also. So uh, on behalf of the church, uh, I hope that you use that very well. Thank you. I love you. Anything else? Oh, I do have one more that I have been asked to do. Uh, ladies, Mother's Day is coming pretty soon. Uh, the Brotherhood met last night and, or yesterday before we had our work day, and we had talked about doing a breakfast for you ladies. We've done it in the times past. Of course, last year we didn't have uh, services at all. But how many would y'all, if you just sort of quickly show by a raise of hands, would be interested in coming and eating breakfast on Mother's Day with us? Hold them up so Wendell can count them in the bag. I think that's almost all of them in here, but that's... You got them? Okay, all right. We had talked about that, and, and I told Wendell, I said, if it's just two of them, we can go ahead and do it because us men love eating anyway. Uh, but uh, we want to be sure that we have enough food, including in everybody. So we've got a lot of things going on, a lot of things on our calendar. Things are beginning to pick up. Uh, after Easter, uh, we've got uh, some guest speakers that are coming. We've got Mother's Day that's coming. We've got homecoming that's planned. Uh, in June, we've got our youth going to, to camp. We've got vacation Bible school. So we're beginning to get back into the swing and beginning to open back up. Uh, saying that to say keep your ears open uh, because I know we're going to need help in like vacation Bible school and those kind of things. And so uh, I hope that uh, we'll be able to get all those back and going. Is there anything else? I've talked enough. It's time to start singing. You know, I love singing when we can sing and make a joy in our hearts. And, and, and I've done told Ethan... If he sees anybody there with just one of them sour looks on their face, just to stop, and if it's in the middle of the song, and, and let's, you know, we're supposed to be singing a joyful noise. I'm thankful he said make a joyful noise because I can't sing. But 
but sing and, and look at the words that we're singing, lifting them up to the Lord. Now let's go to him in a word of prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we love you. Lord, we thank you for the great honor, the privilege that it is of coming into your house and worshiping you. Lord, today as we celebrate Palm Sunday, Lord, the triumphant entry into, the, uh, into Jerusalem, the King is coming. Lord, hallelujah, that you came, that you could bear that cross on Calvary for our sins. Then, Lord, next Sunday as we celebrate you rising from the dead, death could not hold its prey. The body would never decay. Lord, as we celebrate that, that we know that we can honor a risen, living Savior. Lord, today, help us lift our voices to you in singing that sweet melody. Lord, in a little while, I'll ask you to hide me behind the sacred desk. Proclaim in your name the words that you've put up on my heart. Lord, continue to guide us. Lord, in everything that we do and everything that we say will be acceptable, will be honorable in your sight. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Come on, Mr. Ethan. Well, good morning, everybody. If y'all please stand with me, we're going to start off with singing the Old Rugged Cross.
You may be seated. I think that was some of the best singing I've heard in a good while. Couldn't even hear Mr. Gilbert back there. It was great. So let's keep singing loud. <laughs> Doing this next song, How Great Thou Art. for our scripture reading. Good morning. Yes, I'm glad that Brother Ethan didn't stop us in the middle of a song there. We must have done pretty good, did we? All right. You know, when Jesus spoke, he spoke with authority. And here in uh, Matthew 21... One through three we'll be reading this morning. And uh, it goes like this. This is from the Holman uh, Christian Bible. When they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus then sent two disciples telling them, Go into the village ahead of you. At once you will find a donkey tied there with her foal. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you say the Lord needs them, and he will send them at once. Before I pray, I would like to mention some families that are hurting this morning, and a lot of people are. You know, 2020 was indeed a tough year, and it looks like 2021 is not lightening up on us uh, very much. 
But Miss Carla Pope died in Kosciuszko, and some of you folks may be uh, affiliated with some of the Kosciuszko people, but the Godfrey family also is a part of that family. And the Fleming family uh, that I'm associated with out in Grand Prairie, they're also a part of that family. And here locally, we have uh, Miss Pat Sullivan's family. We need to remember them this morning. So if you will, just pray with me for these as we go into our prayer time here. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, in heaven. You're so good to us. You promise us all so many things, and you take care of every promise you give us. And you tell us in your word that if we believe in you, and trust in your Son as our Lord and Savior, you take care of us. Lord, as we prepare now uh, to hear Brother Eves as he comes to give us a message that you've placed on his heart, Lord, give him clarity, give him a speech, give him thoughts, Lord, clear his mind, and everything about this service will be to glorify your name, Lord, lift you up. And uh, I just pray that you'll be with us, be with these families that we've mentioned, Lord. Uh, they're hurting this morning. There's more people all around us that's hurting. For all those that are sick, we pray, Lord, for healing. For those that are weak, we pray for strength. And for those who need your wisdom and your patience and your all the things that you provide for us, Lord, we pray that you'll send that our way. Go with us now, Lord, and forgive us where we fail you, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, the next song that we're going to be singing today is going to be Redeemed, How I Love to Proclaim It. And I just got to confess, whenever I was practicing the song, every time I'd start out, I'd be rushing it and going super fast. But I got Miss Martha going to keep me you know, on the right tempo, so let's sing it. And let's meet it. <laughs> Redeemed how I love to proclaim it. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed through His infinite mercy. His child and forever I am. Redeemed, redeemed. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. child and forever I am redeemed and so happy in Jesus no language my rapture can tell I know that the light of his presence with me doth continually dwell redeemed 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 by the blood of the Lamb Child and forever I am. I know I shall see in his beauty the King in whose law I delight, whose loving light guardeth my footsteps and giveth me song in the night. Redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Child and forever I am. If you'll please stand for the last song, He Lives. I serve a risen Savior, He's in the world today. I know that. I see his hand of mercy, I hear his voice of cheer, and just the time I need him, he's always near. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives. He lives salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. In all this world around me, I see his loving care. 
And though my heart grows weary, I never will despair. I know that He is leading through all the stormy blasts. The day of His appearing will come at last. He lives, He lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, He lives, salvation to win You ask me how I know He lives. He lives within my heart. Rejoice, rejoice, O oh Christian, lift up voice and sing eternal hallelujah to Jesus Christ the King the hope of all who seek Him the help of all who find none other is so loving so good and kind He lives He lives Christ Jesus lives today He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, He lives, salvation to win part. You ask me how I know He lives. He lives within my heart. Right, you may be seated. And now we'll be having a special by Mr. Joe. Jesus, 
on now he's trying he's bringing it down there you go Joe did ask a question what would it take for you to believe that Jesus is all that you need today is we call it Palm Sunday the the triumphant entry into Jerusalem as we look at it uh, if you take your Bibles and turn to Matthew in chapter 21 we want to dig into the scriptures here and just pull out some nuggets that that I want us to look at leading to the cross as, as Jesus was getting ready, I, as I read these scriptures, I, I think that it's absolutely fascinating. You heard this morning when, when Joe was reading that, that Jesus says, Go into the uh, uh, village uh, opposite of you, and there you're going to find a, a, a donkey with her, her foal that's tied up. And, 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 and I want you to get it and bring it to me. And I thought it was very interesting in this saying here in verse 3, it says... If anything, anyone says anything to you, say, The Lord has need of them, and immediately he will send them. Wow. It doesn't tell who the coat belongs to. It doesn't tell anything uh, other than they're going to be a, 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 a mule with, with a, a, a fold that's going to be tied up. That's all we know. We don't know nothing about the owner of it. And Jesus says, I want you to go over there and get it. If somebody says something to you, you just tell them that the Lord has need of it. And when you tell them that, nothing else matters. Immediately, he's going to send it. Wow. <coughs> I, I sort of want to take a step back here just, just for a moment because I want to set the stage. You, you see, the Jews had been... Jesus had been prophesied throughout the whole te Old Testament. People were looking forward to Jesus coming. They knew that there was a, a great prophet coming. They knew that there was going to be a king in the lineage of David. It had been foretold. They, foretold. they knew about it. And all of a sudden, Jesus appears on the scene. And they're thinking, this is our king. This will be the king of the Jews. <coughs> Excuse me. This will be the king of the Jews. He's the one that's going to lead us out of the Roman bondage, out of Roman captivity, if you will. They're going to overthrow Rome. It's going to overthrow the king. And we're going to be the Jews. We're going to be like the Roman Empire. We're going to be the Jewish Empire. And we know that everything is going to fall under us. That's what they were looking for. <coughs> when you stop to think about it, please. When you stop to think about it, that's what the Jews were looking for. They had heard that the king of the Jews is coming. Jesus is coming. And he is our king. He's going to be the ruler. Now that's the mindset that the Jewish people had at this time. Here it was, it was the time of Passover. Here it was, was the, the time that, that, that the people were gathering. They were thinking of the Passover. They were thinking of the time that the children of Israel were led uh, out of captivity into that uh, bondage from the Israelites that, that they were across the sea. 
and they were led out of that Passover and, and, and how all those plagues that God had brought upon the, the, the people and finally that last plague, the, the plague of the death of the firstborn and, and how the death angel would pass over with the blood that was spread upon theirs. They were thinking God is coming back in a miraculous way that, that people have never seen it before. They were excited about it. And Jesus says, go and thank you so much. The sinus drainage sometimes just gets to you, don't it? But, but that's what their mindset were, well, was. And all of a sudden, they went down and they got this donkey. And it says that this took place so that it could be fulfilled that was spoken through the prophet Isaiah. It doesn't just say Isaiah, but the, the prophecy there is from Isaiah. In verse 5, it says, Say that the daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming to you, gentle on a mount, mounted on a donkey, even on a coat, in the fold of the beast of burden. They, they were looking for it. Now, th th it was true. When you think of kings, what do you think of? You think of the kings that rule the mighty uh, uh, armies, the kings that, that will go out and fight with their people. You think of the kings that come uh, uh, mounted on a horse. Today, and, and, and as more modern times come up, you think of the kings that, that ruled completely kingdoms, and his word was the absolutely word of authority. And all of a sudden, they knew that, that it was prophesied in the book of Isaiah that, that, behold, your king is coming to you, gentle, mounted on a donkey. He didn't need to come in riding on a horse. The, the horse was a representative of war and, 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 and overthrowing. And he was coming in on a donkey, peaceful, gentle. People are thinking, man, they are really getting excited. Our king is coming. Man, they're going to put it to the Roman Empire. They are, he is coming here. And they were all excited about it. His disciples went and did just as they had instructed them, and they brought the donkey and the coat, and they laid coats on them, and they sat on their coats, and, uh, and he sat on their coats, and most of the crowd spread their coats on the, the road, and, and the other ones cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. That, that goes back to the, the time in, in 2 Kings 9 and 13 when uh, Juha, uh, uh, the son of, of uh, Jehoshaphat, was taken over as king. Uh, 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 they, they were getting ready to anoint him as king. And as he, he was walking down the steps, they would take their coats off and lay it out and, and, and to make a, a pathway for the king to come. And the people were saying, he's coming. Here comes the king. And he's coming into Jerusalem. And they took their coats and they laid it on the donkey. And they took their coats and they laid it on the ground and they cut branches to make sort of a, a king's highway, if you will, as he comes into Jerusalem. And all the crowd was following him on this donkey and here comes our king. The crowd's going ahead of him. Those that were following were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who come in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. When you think of the word Hosanna, what do you think of? It says that, that Hosanna is, Savior was he. He was Savior. That's what the Hosanna means. Savior is he. Hosanna in the highest. Savior is he. The, the, the Savior is coming from the highest point is what they were hollering out. Jesus is coming. He's the king that's going to save us all. And they were hollering, here he comes the king. And as he was walking down, was into the pathway. And then he entered into Jerusalem in verse 10. And, and it said it stirred up the city. Some of them were saying, who is this? Some of them already knew. But they said, some of them said, who is this? And the crowds were saying, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. This is the one that's been prophesied about coming. This is the one that, that has prophesied that he is coming. Jesus had promised, uh, uh, God had promised that he was going to send a king that will rule forever. And this is him. We've seen all the signs. We know what he's going to do. And he's coming. And Rome, you better be watching out because here comes our king. That's the mindset of the people. That's what they were thinking. Hosanna. 
Savior, He's coming, He's here. And then all of a sudden, He makes that triumphant entry, in, entry into Jerusalem. And there in verse 12, it says, He entered into the temple. And he drove out all of the, the ones that were buying and selling in the temple and overturned the tables. This is the second time that he cleansed out the temple. He went in and he, he immediately started turning over the tables and he run the, 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 the chain money changers out and those that were buying and selling and, and he was running them out. Now I want to stop here and just, just pause for a minute. I, I, I don't know, the Bible doesn't anywhere that I know of actually describes the, the physical description of Jesus. I can't read anywhere in the Bible where it says he stood, stood six foot two, he weighed 240 pounds, he had arms like a mule. He, I mean, it doesn't say any of that. It doesn't say anything about the description of Jesus. But I want to stop right here and think, this is the second time that he cleansed the temple out, as they call it, cleaning the temple goes in and turns the tables over and runs everybody out. And I'm going to tell you, that, that wasn't a wimp of a physical man that I have in my appearance, uh, in my mind. He, he wasn't a scrawny little boy that, that walked in there. I, I don't know his physical appearance. Like I said, in the Bible, it doesn't describe it anywhere. But, but in my mind, he, he was sort of a big man. He was sort of a hunk of a man. Nobody objected to him. The temple guards didn't try to grab him and throw him out. What are you doing? And if somebody like me was to go in there, they'd probably grab me and throw me out on my head about four somersaults out the door, you know. But, but they, they didn't do that. Now keep in mind what the people outside are thinking. If Jesus goes into the temple and he cleans out the temple. He throws all the, the money changers out and everything out. And, and they said unto, he said unto them, it is written, My house shall be called the house of prayer, but you've made it into a robbery den. That's quoted from Isaiah in 56 and verse 7, also over in Jeremiah 7 and 11. He says, You've made it a den of thieves, robbing people. You, you allow things to come into the temple that should not be here. You've heard me say before, the church that doesn't confront sin conforms to sin. And that's what was happening here in the temple. They, they wasn't confronting sin, they were conforming to it. Making money exchange and, and, and robbing them. Yeah, I, I know that, that, that your money and my money should equal, but I, I'm going to only give you half of what you're going to, you need for your money in exchange. And, and because the, the temple money is the only money that we accept here. So to pay your temple taxes, you, you know, the temple taxes is $400. Uh, so we're going to take $800 of your Roman money and convert it into $400. That's what they were doing. Oh, this dove, I'm sorry, that, that's not pure enough for a sacrifice. I, I'm sorry, take it away. Here's one that, that is, is already pure enough, and, and we're going to sell it to you for $25. Oh, you got a, a lamb, an unblemished lamb that goes to the, the sacrifice for, for the Lord? Oh, no, this has got blemishes all over it. It's not good enough. Guards, take this one away. We do have one over here, and it's going to cost you $200. If, you wanna, if you're here to do your animal sacrifice to the Lord, you've got to buy this one because yours is unacceptable. And a lot of times they'd take that one over here, and they'd wait the next day, and they would sell it back to somebody else. Jesus says, you made it a, thin, a, a den of thieves, a robbery den. And he cleared the temple out. And all of a sudden, the people are shouting, Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. God has come. God has sent what he said he was going to send. And, and, and it says there in verse 14, and the blind and the lame came into the temple and he healed them. Wow, what a triumphant day. The Jews thought it was the greatest day that, that ever was. That here comes Jesus, mounted on the donkey, just like the, the prophet Isaiah had said. He had come in, he had cleared the temple out. 
<coughs> he called their, temp, their, their attentions to what was written over in Isaiah and what was written over in Jeremiah. Oh, this has got to be the one the Lord has said is going to be the king. He's fixed to overthrow. That's what they had in mind. It says, but when the chief priest and the scribes and wondered the things he had done, and the children who were shouting in the temple, Hosea, the Savior has come. Savior are, uh, is he. Savior to the son of David. They became mad. Furated. Who is he that would come into God's temple and tell us that we're doing wrong. Who is this that would stand up to the, uh, the, the chief priest, the scribes and the Pharisees, and tell us we're wrong? Where did he get his education? Who does he think he is? And the children of Israel were shouting. And they said to him, Do you hear that those children are saying, and Jesus again quotes from Psalms chapter 8 and verse 2. Yes, have you not read out of the mouth of infants and nursing babies? You have prepared pairs for yourself. You have prepared praises for yourself. And he left them and went out of the city. The, the triumphant entry, they, they thought they were, the king is coming. Shortly after this, shortly after this, Jesus went to the Garden of Gethsemane. As he knelt down and he prayed that prayer that we talk about that's like no other prayer, sweat drops of blood, broken hearted, Daddy, if there's any other way. I know the cruelty of the cross. I know the physical pain. I know the emptiness of the rejection of the people. We talked about that last week. I know what it's going to be, but, but if there's no other way, if there's no other way, it's not about me, it's about you. Your will be done. As he got through in that garden of Gethsemane and as he got through praying, he got up and he went back to his disciples and there was a crowd coming through the woods and they had torches and they had swords and it was an army that came and, and, and there was a scuffle that, that sort of went on just, just for a little bit. Even when Peter drew a sword and cut off the ear of the, one of the priests. And Jesus says, no, wait a minute. I didn't come to fight with swords. This is what the Lord has for me. This is what God sent me to do. What really amazes me is this whole time, he was not thinking about himself. He was thinking about an old rugged sinner like me. What would it take to make me believe that Jesus is all that I need. Beautiful song, Joe. As they drug him through the streets, as they drug him from one trial to the next trial to the next, as Pilate was trying to figure out a way, I, I, I can't find any fault in this man. And the crowd that just a few days before was saying, Hosanna. The king is coming. Some of those same people were standing in the crowd hollering, crucify him. The others were standing by not saying anything. Wait a minute, what happened to our king? They're, they're fixed to crucify him. We, we thought that we had a king that was coming. We must have all been fooled. So do away with them. The whole time he was thinking of me. He was thinking of you. As finally, Pilate says, look, we've, we've got a murderer over here, one that has been convicted and, and is sentenced to hang, but 
this day we're supposed to release a prisoner. Do you want me to release this murderer back into your city or Jesus? Release Barabbas. We'll take Jesus to crucify him. Crucify him. The whole time. He was saying, nevertheless, Dad, not what I want, but what you want. They drug him from one court to the other. The guards was gathering around him and put a crown of thorns on his head. Oh, you're the king. Oh, tell me what to do. So they'd take the wreaths and they'd hit that crown of thorns on his head and those thorns would pierce into his head. I, I can't help but just stop and think. Yesterday, I had a headache when I got home. You ever had one of those that your head just, you felt every heartbeat, boom, boom, you know? We're fortunate enough, I took two Tylenol, laid down for about 30 minutes, and boom, it was gone. But can you imagine one of those crowns of thorns on your head, and they were hitting it with wreaths, and it was beating into your head, and physically your head was just pounding, and people were hollering and laughing at you, they're slapping you from one place to the other. People are saying, crucify him. And, and he's thinking, I'm innocent. I've, I've not done anything. But this is, this is daddy's will. This is what I've come for. As they take him and they put him on that, that, that post. And they beat him. The harsh beatings. This wasn't the Jewish beatings of the 40 lashes minus one. This was the Roman beating that, that they didn't have a number that they could beat you. They just beat you until they thought it was enough. And doing some research, even in the beatings that they beat people, about 80% of them would die in the beatings before they would even get to the cross of crucifixion. Because they would want to beat them almost to that point of death. And they, they, they would take that kind of nine tails and as they would tie them up, they would take that whip and it would go across their back and come around the side. And, 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 and on the end of that, that cat of nine tails, there was bone and there was glass that was woven into that leather and it would dig into the flesh and it would pull it out. Jesus wasn't a wimp of a man. As I said, I, I don't have a physical description of them. But a lot of them died on that post of whipping, just literally physically being beat to death the whole time. Not my will, but daddy yours. They finally said, we've got them just to the point of death, right where we want them. Okay, stop. That's enough. No more beatings for him. Untie him. Hand him his cross and let him carry it through the streets. Physically, he put the cross upon his shoulders and he was carrying it through the streets and people were laughing at him and mocking and throwing things at him. Physically, he could not make it all the way to Golgotha with the cross. He was beat down, rejected. I stop and think. He had me in mind. And all the wickedness that I've done, all the sins that I've committed, he knew me. And he was willing to do this for me. What does it take to make you believe in Jesus? They drug him to that cross. The cross of Golgotha, the hill of the skulls. They drove nails in his hands and in his feet and they raised him high above everything with two thieves on both sides of him. 
I can only imagine as they, they drove him up and those nails were in his hands and, and as that cross came up into that hole and it, it slid down and the tearing of his skin, the pain and the agony. And at any time he could have looked around and said, Gilbert, you're not worth this. And he could have come off the cross. But it says for you and for me, he was willing to do this. To fulfill God's plan. That he was the ultimate sacrifice. That we wouldn't have to worry about going to the temples and, 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 and trying to do the money exchange and pay the temple taxes. We wouldn't have to worry about raising a lamb that was unblenished, that, that would go to, to be sacrificed. That this would be once and for all, for all mankind. What does it take to make you believe that Jesus is all that you need? As he hung on that cross. Finally, he died. Physically. Emotionally drained. Looking around people laughing, mocking. The ones that were saying, Hosanna. Hosanna to the son of David is now saying, crucify him. And they're laughing at him. Wow, and he looks up and he says, Daddy. Daddy, forgive them. Because they don't understand what they're doing. They were looking for that earthly king that was coming. They didn't really understand the sacrificed lamb that was before them. They began to understand that on the day of Pentecost when Peter and all the disciples were standing before them. But at this time, they didn't understand that. We're let down again. We thought God's promise has been fulfilled in our lives and do away with them. He's not him. He's not overthrowing the Roman government. He's not putting us back as the, the Jewish kingdom and the power that we had when David ruled over uh, us. They didn't understand. Their king had come. Our king had come. And he wasn't just the king of the Jews. He was the king for the Jews and the Gentiles. He was our king. He was coming that we wouldn't be enslaved by Rome or by any other great power. Even here in the United States, as much as what they're trying to do with our religious freedom and telling us of what we can and can't do, he freed us from that. See, our king had come. And he physically died. The Bible says he went to that place called hell. And he took the keys of hell away from the devil. And next Sunday, we're going to be singing and shouting that our king is not in the grave, that he arose that we celebrate because we do have a risen living Savior of all the things that He went through and the beatings and the mockings and the laughing He went through for you and for me so that we could come to Him and say, God, I have sinned. Lord, I, I've transgressed Your Word and I am so sorry. Lord, I figured out in my heart I have learned that, that You are all that I need. And I want you to come into my life. I want you to live forever. I want you to have freedom to move in my life and guide me and direct me. Just like the guy who owned the donkeys that we know absolutely nothing about. Just say the Lord has need of them and immediately he's going to send them. Lord, immediately send me. 
I don't know what you have in store. But whatever I have is yours. And I give it to you. You see, that's the reason why he rose from the grave. Now he sits at the right hand of God. And he looks down and he says, Daddy, I, I know that Gilbert has sinned. And I know he's messed up. Lord, in his heart, he has repented. He's turned away. He is so sorry. And Daddy, that's the reason why I fulfilled your will. So that he could be forgiven with a humble heart. You see, that's what we need to realize. With the humbleness in our heart. God, I've messed up. I've said so many times that the greatest sinner in the church often stands behind the pulpit because I fail him so miserably at times in my life. I'm not perfect by no means. And I mess up, I goof up. But I do know that when I go to the foot of the cross and I ask for forgiveness... His word says that he is not only willing, but he is just. And he'll forgive my sins and he'll remove them as far as the east is from the west. And he'll hold them against me no more. And that's a continuous cleanse as we continually <coughs> confess. So my question is to you. What will it take... What will it take for you to believe that Jesus is all that you need? For the forgiveness of our sins, the cleansedness of our life, to have more life. What did Jesus say? I come that you could have life and have it more abundantly. More abundant life. What does it take? Jesus was willing to die on the cross. Oh, we could spend hours of talking about the physical part of it, the beatings. We could take hours of talking about him hanging on the cross, the six sayings of the cross. We could take hours in talking about all of it. But the bottom line is, is what does it take for you to believe? Jesus is here waiting on you, waiting on me. I don't know how many people I've talked to, some even here recently. Well, Brother Gilbert, I know I need to get back in church, but I, I've got so much going on in my life. I, I've got to get this straight. I've got to get over this hump. I've, I've got to get this out of my life. I've got to do, and, and, and so many people are saying, I've got to do this or that before I can come back. And Jesus is saying, no. No. I want you just like you are. And let me help get those things out of your life. I want you just like you are. So my second question to you in the middle of my sermon now, I'm just kidding. But my second question to you now, are you willing to come just like you are to the foot of the cross and give it all to Him? Let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we love you. Lord, we thank you for who you are. For your love, your mercy, your grace. Lord, for you willing to go to the old rugged cross of Calvary. For you willing to, to take our sins, our burdens upon you. To physically suffer, bleed. To physically die, but emotionally to be completely emptied. To be laughed at, to be mocked at. And to take all of the sins and the burdens of the world upon your shoulders for the ultimate sacrifice. So Lord, in the simplicity 
that we can come just like we are to the foot of the cross and asking for forgiveness, for renewing of life. Maybe, Lord, there's somebody here that, that needs to come to the foot of the cross and give their lives to you. They've never asked you to come in to their lives. Maybe there's somebody here that needs to continue in your word and say that I've, I've given my life to you, but I've never confessed it before anybody. Your word says is to confess you before men and you will confess us before your heavenly Father. I ask each one of you to examine your life where you stand maybe it's just as simple as God is wanting you to come and to, to move your membership here to be a part of the fellowship here whatever it is don't hold back Lord Jesus move us direct our hearts and let us immediately give you what you deserve this altar is open. I'll be down front. Whatever the Lord has for you, Lord Jesus, move us, mold us, and make us after your will. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.